This lesson is about significant figures and their meaning in science. Now, when we talk about uh, significant figures, what we're talking about are uh, digits in a measurement that are actually meaningful. Uh, in other words, the uh, digits that actually represent a measurement. Now, that may not make a whole lot of sense right now, but as we go on here, hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense as we practice. The first thing we have to do when uh, learning about significant figures is learn how to count how many significant figures there are in a number or in a measurement. So there are some rules we just have to learn. Here's the first rule. All non-zero digits are significant. And so we'll do some examples here. Uh, here's an example 732. Well, all of those are non-zero numbers. And when we say non-zero, do we mean the numbers uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9? Those are, of course, not zeros. So all of those are significant. And so we'd say that this uh, measurement has, or this number has, three significant figures in it. Here's another example, 2.4. Obviously, we have two significant figures right there. SF, of course, is for significant figures. And there's another one. It looks like it's a little bit more precise because it has more significant figures. Hopefully, you can see that it has one, two, three, four, five significant figures. So that uh, rule is simple enough. Now, if there are non-zero digits, well, then there have to be the other type of number would be a zero. What are zeros? Well, we're going to uh, classify zeros based upon where they appear in the number. Now, here's the first rule about zeros. Leading zeros are not significant. And when I say leading zeros, I'm talking about zeros that appear at the beginning of a number. Now, here's an example of that, 0 0.00734. We have these uh, three zeros at the beginning. Well, those are actually not significant. And so I'll put little x's above them to show that. And then we have the 7, the 3, and the 4. Well, the last rule told us that those are significant. So this number has three significant figures. The next example, uh, 0, 0, 0012, well, this is not the way most people write the number 12. That looks a little bit goofy, and that's because those leading zeros are not significant. They really don't have to be there, do they? So we have two significant figures there, just the, the 1 and the 2. Here's another example, 0 0.39. So that leading zero, of course, doesn't really have to be there. It's not significant. And the three and the nine are significant. So that number has two significant figures. Now, basically what this is telling us is leading zeros, since they're not significant, they really don't have to be there. And so it's obvious here in this second example, especially, you can write it as 12, can't you? And that doesn't really change the, the value or the precision of that number. And the same thing with the 0 0.39. A lot of you might just write it like this, 0.39, no zero out in front. It doesn't change anything about that. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. This first number, you might say, well, those leading zeros have to be there because they're placeholders. And I would challenge you and say, no, those leading zeros do not have to be there. Can you think of a way to write that number, 0 0.00734, without those leading zeros? What about this? In our lesson on scientific notation, hopefully you learned that this value right here, 7.34 times 10 to the negative third, is the exact same thing. And there's no, no change in the value there, or the level of precision. So leading zeros are not significant. Here's another rule that you need to know. Middle zeros are significant. And when I say middle zeros, I'm talking about the zeros that appear in between, wedged in between non-zero numbers, like in this case, 0 0.7905. The first rule we learned said that the 7 and the 9 and the 5, well, those are non-zero numbers, so those are significant. What about this leading zero over here? 
Well, we just learned also that's not significant, but here we have a middle zero. So the rule here says it is significant. So that number has four significant figures. That Those have to be there. Here's another one, the number 2003. How many significant figures does that have? I hope you said four, because we have the two and the three, which are significant, since they're non-zero numbers. And then we have a couple of middle zeros here. So we have four significant figures. Here's another example. We have 0 0.0507. Well, that 5 and 7 are significant because they're non-zero numbers. Those leading zeros are not significant. And the middle zero is. So there are three significant figures in that number. Well, if we have leading zeros, and they're not significant, and we have middle zeros that are significant, what's the only other type of zeros that we can have? Well, if you said ending zeros, that would be right. Sometimes they're called trailing zeros. We can just call them ending zeros. These are zeros at the end of a number. And the rule's a little bit more complex here. Ending zeros are significant if you see a decimal point present. And so here's an example. We have the number 7,100. And we know that the 7 and the 1 are significant because they're non-zero numbers. But are those ending zeros significant? No, they're not, because there's no decimal point here at the end. So those are not. And so this number only has two significant figures. What about this number? 3.000. How many significant figures does that have? Well, it looks like it has four because there's a non-zero number there. And then we have three ending zeros. And there's a decimal point present right there. So that means that the ending zeros are significant. So we have four significant figures in that amount right there. Here's a number. 4.070. How many significant figures are in that number? It looks like there are four here also. We have a couple of non-zero numbers, the four and the seven. We have a middle zero, and those are significant. Then we have an ending zero, and since there's a decimal point visible right here, that means the ending zero is significant as well. So that's four significant figures. Let's do one more example. If you can do this, then you're probably an expert. 0 0.003020. Lots of zeros there. How many significant figures does that number have? This is a tough one. I hope you said four. Let's see where there are, there are four here. We have two non-zero numbers. We have three leading zeros, which are not significant. And then we have a middle zero that is significant. And then there's an ending zero. And since there's a decimal point right here, that means that that ending zero is significant. So we have four significant figures. Now, we have to be careful when we count these significant figures because your calculator does not really understand much about significant figures when you try typing these numbers into your calculator most of the time. For example, look at the second example here, 3.000. Now, if you try typing that into your calculator and then hitting the equals or the enter sign, what it's probably going to do is just uh, truncate that number to 3. And maybe from, from a mathematical point of view, those two numbers are the same. But the fact is, in chemistry and in all of science, those two numbers are different. Now, how is that? Well, the number three, this number right here, just tells me that someone has only measured with one significant figure. And so that means that they have not expressed very much precision. So we'll say not very precise. 
if someone only measures with three sign or with one significant figure, then that's not a very precise measurement. But up here, 3.000, this has four significant figures, and that tells me that someone has measured very precisely. That's a very precise measurement. It tells me that someone actually took the effort and the care to measure all the way out to the third decimal place, to the, the thousandths place, and it's exactly 3.000 centimeters or inches or whatever unit you may be using. So here's a, a brief lesson on significant figures that you can use on your next assignment.